Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up? This is Latif, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 68. Yes. Hey, um, listen, anybody who um, has been listening to the podcast, to the podcast on Spotify, um, I please forgive me. Um, there's like some sort of technical difficulties. Somehow, for some reason, um, The podcast coming off of Anchor are not being uploaded to Spotify. I need to check the other platforms to see if it's just Spotify or is it on my side. You know, I don't know. I went on, I spent about an hour looking into it. I couldn't figure it out, but I'll get back to it. Uh, Spotify is a very important platform. There's several of you guys that listen on that platform, so I definitely want to make sure that it's up and working uh, correctly. So I appreciate it. Um, don't forget, you know, um, Anchor is actually a pretty cool app. Um, there's a lot of stuff. It's actually blowing up. Uh, it's going to be really popular. You're eventually going to find, uh, run across um, podcasts that are, are exclusive. You know, you might run into, uh, you might, well, hear about uh, podcasts that are exclusive on, on Anchor. So it might be a good idea to check it, uh, anchor.fm. So you might want to check that out. Really cool, um, cool format. You don't need to, I think you can le- listen, to, listen to it right from the app. Just go into the search and type in Goodnight Freestyle and you can listen to all the episodes. Um, but anyway, um, it is Sunday evening. I pretty much chilled out. I did a lot of writing, though. Um, working on Yes, Yes, Y'all. I had to finish book one. I'm a few pages off. I'll have it done by tomorrow for sure. Uh, then I have to start book two. My deadline is uh, March 27th. If the book is not ready by March 27th, at least in the Kindle version, I get penalized. So I need to get them done. Uh, but then it goes to manufacturing. It'll take maybe about a week for them to print the, the copies. And then they will ship me some of the pre-sales. Some of the people who have purchased pre-sales. I do not do pre-sales that often because I'm not really big on shipping. Uh, but these people have purchased. I did 25 people. I think I got 22 or 20 um, who have purchased uh, direct from me. Uh, what I did is I gave them the three books. I'm getting the three books for the price of two. I'm actually taking a hit on that one, but that's fine. I'm also signing the books for them. So it's pretty cool. I think you guys are going to really enjoy uh, this book, especially if you were like uh, from the like the New or if you're interested in the New York uh, area in the 80s, uh, really before freestyle when it was mostly hip hop and how the hip hop wave kind of came into New York. And um, the story is actually about a Puerto Rican rapper who's out there trying to get a deal. And though they love his material, they don't want to sign him because as far as they're concerned, he doesn't have the look. And that's what quotation marks, the look. You know what I mean? He wasn't black. And that was a very, uh, very common situation in New York back in, back in the days. And I experienced that firsthand and I always want to tell, tell the story about it. Most of the book is fictitious, but like all my books, um, they, they do run parallel to a lot of my own life. So anyone who knows me personally can read my books and be able to pinpoint uh, some historic moments that they'll recognize. So but anyway, that's what I did today. Um, then we went, picked up Santana. She has school um, back out tomorrow. We don't forget guys. Uh, uh, what is it? Spring forward, spring forward. So make sure you uh, put your um, your clocks up. So for instance, if it's 10 p.m., make sure you set it for 11 p.m. Okay, um, uh, get that done. You do, yeah, you do lose an hour of sleep, so uh, it doesn't matter to me. I get up early anyway, so not a big deal. But um, yeah, so anyway, so we're gonna get this week going. 
Uh, I'm excited. I got a lot going on. I'm really, really, really uh, itching to kind of really get my week headed. Going to be a little sad, though. I'm going to be a little sad towards the end of the week because my wife is going to Florida for a wedding. Okay? And anyone who knows my wife and I, we rarely do anything apart. But this week, you know, Santana has school. Um, I'm just really backed up. I really, I can't, I can't break away. Plus, I want her to be able to spend a couple of days with her family. And if I'm there, I could be a pain in the ass. I, I want to stay in, in hotels and I, I, that's just me. That's even when I'm with my family. It's a nothing personal. It's just, just me. It's just me. Um, at least this way she can go and she can stay with her family at their house because she's always invited. We're always, I'm invited as well. I know and I appreciate that. Um, but uh, it's going to be, a, this is going to be a rough week. And I, I can't, Santana, because of the fact sometimes we fly out on Fridays, she has to lose, she has to miss school. <clears throat> and this is when we're doing, when we're doing our shows. So we try our best not to let her miss any of the schools except for when we're working. So we have to kind of work around that because uh, it'll be too many days. We don't get that many Fridays that we do. Um, and if we do, if we have a Saturday and we want to go out on Friday night, uh, we'll take it like a red eye. We'll take a real life flight. So we'll lay flight. So we'll be able to bring her to her mother's house and drop her off there and then head to the airport uh, from there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be a little, be a little down. I'm not used to not being with my wife. So it's going to be, it's going to be strange. Santana's going to stay here uh, with me over the weekend, her and Coco. So I will not be alone. Thank God. I don't like to be alone. I really don't. I can't stand it. It's, I don't know. I like to be by myself, but not alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in I'm in my office now. I can be here for hours and not see anybody. But just the ability to go out there and stick my head on and say, hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm good with that, you know. But, yeah, so this this weekend is going to be a little, it's going to be a little off. She says she's, <laughs> she's going to make me some, uh, some food and put them away in Tupperware. All we have to do is uh, heat them up. I doubt if I'm gonna do all that. I'm probably gonna just live off like pizza and, and cookies and chips this weekend. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, and then I, I I wonder why I'm gaining so much weight. Anyway, so, but um, but yeah, ever since uh, my wife and I have been together, we, you know, I'm I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate. I mean, I've seen couples who just can't stand being around each other, and oof, man, that's rough. That's rough, especially if your if your relationship is to the point where you're not gonna go anywhere. You know, you're just gonna basically live out your misery. That's that's really sad, sad situation. And I don't even have advice for it. Some people say, "Well, just make it work." Other people say, "Nah, man, you're still young. Just go out there and get somebody else." But I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not in that situation. I don't want to be in that situation. So I don't know what I would do. I don't know if I would stick around or if I would just dip, you know. Uh, maybe the other option is stick around until an opportunity presents itself. I don't know. It sounds kind of kind of messed up, but, I mean, what else? I mean, what, what do you do? Do you live the rest of your life, like, miserable? Now, I don't think that's fair either. Like, I mean, it's it's possible that... A husband and wife, or husband and husband, or wife and wife, can grow to kids where you can't stand each other, maybe even hate each other. That's probably where you get, you know, these spouses killing each other, which is like, wow, you know, it's like sleeping with the enemy. If you can't, man, if you can't trust your wife or your husband or whatever, you know, then who can you trust? You know, this is, this person has to be like, you know, their trust uh, factor should be close to God, you know, um, because you got to live with them and you have to trust them and you have to sleep with them. And, you know, and, and, you know, and I see, I've seen couples who they huff and puff to each other. Yeah, you know, everybody gets on each other's nerves. That's different, you know. That has nothing to do with it. That's just life. Best friends get on each other's nerves, co-workers get on each other's nerves, you know, parents and kids get on each other's nerves, siblings, you know, so a husband and wife is just, just as, just as much, but to honestly, honestly, not like the other person, 
because when you don't like some someone, you can actually get to the point, and it's it's kind of sad, but you can actually get to the point where you really don't care what happens to them, and that's oof, that's bad, you know. You might even you know pray for their demise. Who knows, you know? I mean, I could see, I could see, you know. I look at stuff like you know, 48 hours all like snapped, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. That's nuts, you know? And then you got the, the just the criminals. They do it for, like, insurance and stuff like that. But that's horrible. And those people deserve to get caught and put in prison for the rest of their lives, maybe even executed, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm fortunate. I, I enjoy my marriage. Me and my wife have a very unique relationship. Um, we don't need to be around people. We can actually sit at a table, her and I, and have a conversation for like an hour, you know, so, um, we, we get along, we have a lot of things in common, um, we see things very similar, you know, sometimes I got something in my head, and she kind of knows exactly what I got in my head, and vice versa, you know, um, she knows me, I'm, I could be a baby, I could be a big baby, I'm not gonna lie, Anyone who's been around me can tell, especially when I'm home. I don't think I ask for much, but uh, the few things I do ask, uh, I'm pretty specific, <laughs> you know? So, but it, it's fine. But, you know, her and I, we play our perfect roles. I know exactly what I need to do and what I need to bring in this relationship, and so does she. And we're together almost 20 years. We got together in 2000, 2002, and then we got married in... I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, 2008, six, seven, 2007, I'll tell you why. She plays that song. She sings that song. 867, uh, dinner. Well, 867 was our, is our wedding anniversary is when we got married. So that will be August 6, 2007. So um, that's when we got married. And uh, so, and we got married here in North Carolina. So, uh, very interesting, very interesting uh, marriage uh, wedding ceremony. We it was um we planned it many times. We um we planned on getting married on a cruise. We planned on getting married on the road somehow. I mean, we had a few plans. You know, it was mainly on a cruise. We kept talking about getting married on a cruise. That was a big thing. And then we were like, well, how do we do it? Do we? like buy everybody's ticket or do we invite people and they come like we didn't know what to do you know um and then what happened was we were here and my brother and sister happened to be coming to town and with their kids and me and angel said well this is a good time why don't we why don't we do it now and we did we planned it right before uh Right before they got here, and um, went to the justice of the peace. We did the justice of the peace. We, that's how we got married, and and then from there we went to uh, Olive Garden. I, I remember because I rented out an entire back section, so it was like we had our own room. And and you know what? It was I don't like Olive Garden food. It was a brand new place that had just opened there, so um, but uh, and I reserved the whole back room. But it was cool. We had fun. There was a lot of people there. It was just our family, and we ate, and we toasted. We had champagne, and it was really, really, uh, really cool. It was very special, you know? I mean, I would have liked to have given my wife, uh, uh, you know, that fairy tale, fairy, fairy tale wedding that they all dream about. I would. Unfortunately, just, you know, I was I was raised so, so much so differently you know it was just I'm pretty spontaneous in in my actions um I plan but I can also be very spent spontaneous when I have to um <clears throat> but um you know that was the first time I was ever married was with her so you know of course the procrastination in the beginning that's that's pretty typical I think a lot of people do that. Not just the guys. I think the guys kind of take the cake, though. But girls do it, too. You know? And I don't think that you, you know, right away they start, oh, what, you waiting for something better to come along? 
I don't think that's it. I think with me, what it was, was I knew that if I got married, that was it. I was going to commit for life, for life at SA. And I wanted to make sure that I was good with that. Was it now didn't love her, that I could be with her the rest of my life. I never had to marry her. I, w- I would not have loved her any less. But um, I guess, you know, I'm making a commitment and I wanted to make sure, and for her sake, that this is something I really, really wanted. And um, and it turned out to be, yeah, yeah, I, re- I really, really want it. I mean, it took me a long time to finally, you know, tie the knot and... I have no regrets, and you know what? Time has flown, which means that you had a good time. And to this day, she's still the same. I think we're the same with each other. I think I think we both, and I think it's because, you know, we both have past relationships. And I think both those relationships, from what when we talk, were not, they were not good. And however, her and I are both those type of people that we like to settle. We want to settle with the right person. So when we stepped into the marriage, we already knew in our heads, we didn't even have to talk about it, but we both knew individually that we were going to do everything we possibly can to salvage, to to make sure, not salvage because it was never, never nothing, but to really treasure this uh, this union. And I think we did. I think we, um, you know, we have arguments like everybody else, and sometimes they could get pretty bad. She usually starts them, <laughs> but, uh, um, but um, yeah, just like everybody else. But other than that, it's you know, it's nothing to the point where you're thinking bad thoughts or you want to break up. You know, I can't, I can't envision that. You know, and I've gotten to the point where now that we're getting older, um, we. I get worried, you know, like I worried about my I worry about my wife more than my own kids because my kids are grown and I know no matter what, they're going to be okay, they're going to survive, they're going to be fine, but my wife is getting old with me, you know, so you start thinking that way and I, I've seen, you know, people that I know and friends of mine that, you know, they've been with their spouses for a long time and, you know, they're either getting sick or some have passed away and, and they become, you know, it just put, turns their world upside down. And I can understand this. You know, when you have your, your parents, um, it's like we, from when we're kids, we, we, we know one day we're going to lose them. We know one day they're going to pass away. We try not to think about it, but it's going to happen. We know that. And then on the tragic part is when your kids go, when you, you, you have tragedy with your children and they, they pass or whatever the case may be. And that's something none of us want to go through. But then you have the couple who have been, who lived basically as one until they were old. And I've seen a few videos like this, and they're probably the most heartbreaking videos I've ever seen. And uh, I, there's one you guys probably seen on YouTube and where it's, they're very old. They look like they're probably in their 90s already. And... The, the wife is laying in the bed and the husband's, you know, s- sitting beside her on a chair and he's holding her hand and he's singing to her. And he's singing, I don't know if it was like their favorite song or the song when they got married, but oh my God, I couldn't even watch the whole thing, man. You know, it's like, wow, so now what happens? Like, you know, there's no way in the world that, you know, you're going to have this long, this is the way I think about it, there's no way in the world that you're going to have this life with someone. And then all of a sudden, they pass away and you pass away and then that's it. That can't possibly be it. There has to be something else going on on the other side. That cannot possibly be it. That just makes no sense, you know. So, you know, so so I think right now, I guess in my life, that's probably the thing that I fear the most at the at the at this moment, you know? Of course my kids, that's tragedy. And that's 
something that should never happen. None of us should ever have to bury our children. Um, and I have a daughter who's who's in the army in Germany, so God forbid anything could go down, you know. But um, but those are their lives at this point, you know, and they're young, and all we can do is pray pray for them, you know. But your spouse, though, and the spouse that you are really, really, really connected with, yeah, that's a very scary thought for me. And um, so in this lifetime, I just, I try to make sure, and I'm not good at it, trust me. I try to make sure that I have no regrets, especially when it comes to my wife. My kids, I think I did the best I possibly can. They're not here. They're out of the house. I try to do the best I can with the grandkids. And I spoke about this yesterday, about regrets. And when it comes to my wife, I don't want regrets. I don't want regrets. I always want to make sure she's more free spirit as far as Let's just break away and let's go take a walk or let's go jump on a ship or let's jump on a plane or let's go to New York or let's go here. Let's go to the beach. I'm unfortunately more like, well, I can't do it this week because I have to finish this. Maybe we could go in a couple weeks. You know, that's me. I'm not happy about that. But it's very important because... I want to sustain us. I want to make sure that we're good. I want to make sure that we have the funds to do what we have to do. And I, you know, I work in a genre called freestyle. You know, it's not at the top of the charts anymore. So, you know, working this genre is a hustle. Like, you got to hustle to make a living. I've been hustling on it for well over 20 years. So, um, so it takes a job. It's not like, you know, I can hit the big one and go go away for a couple months. It doesn't work like that. You got you can hit the the big one and go away for a week, but you gotta come right back and get back to work. You know? So but I I don't want regrets at all. Not not when it comes to her, so and I probably will be, because I'm never gonna think I was the best. Even though she gives me tons of props. Like she overlooks Every little flaw that I have, as far as she's concerned, I'm the I'm the, the the best looking guy in the world. I'm the smartest one in the world. I'm the sexiest one in the world, and you know, and like every quality, I'm the best writer. I have, you know, what I'm saying, um, at, you know, everything to her about me is the best. And like, where do I ever get that? You know. I don't think it's true. She'll fight me on it, but that's her spe- perspective, and that's fine. As long as, you know, love is in the eye of the beholder, you know? As long as she feels like that, I'm good. Because I feel the same way with her. She might think different. She might say, well, I'm this, or I'm that, or I can't do this. She's perfect to me. She's perfect. So, anyway, keep that in mind, guys, you know? If you're with your spouse or whatever, go give them a hug, give them a kiss. I'm going to go in the room right now give my my wife a kiss. She's going to look at me and say, what the hell's wrong with you? What was that for? <laughs> so, all right, guys, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow, man. Be cool, and good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.